just the back and forth momentum oh. swap that there's a big rock here comes romero oh. with a pull counter there Bang! we go we have there our it is. champion ladies and gentlemen what's Yours? good y'all y'all guys see it right there that says 30 plus new fighters over a specific you know time period we got ourselves a new patch and it is going to be dropping tomorrow and i'm going to be happily breaking it down for y'all i was out in canada last week so expect a lot of footage lots of motion capture uh lots of training got some training in with uh, former ufc fighter tristan Connolly. i think i'll probably upload that first before you guys see this patch breakdown and just overall really good time got to express a lot of good things that needed to be said so without further ado let's get into breaking down this patch so significant roster update so it's time at launch we committed to you that we would work to get as many ranked and fan favorite fighters into the ufc etc etc being able to be there and seeing like the whole process of how this works especially with them having to be there or having a fighter needing to have like a fight coming up so they can get there to capture their likeness to the best of their ability it's really really important for them but yeah they got 30 plus new fighters coming in and this is not including alter ego so what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom in for y'all right april so for this week, Tracy Cortez, Jeff Neal, I've been asking for Jeff for a while, Umar Namagomedov, Diego Lopez, Sergey Spivak, eh, I was, I was like, eh, about him, but he need to be in, Mohamed Mokaev, Marina Rodriguez, Mosfar Evloev, and Brendan Allen. At the end of April, right, because it still says April, so it has to be at the end of April, Drew Dober, Natalia Silver, I honestly don't know who that is. Uh, Michael Venom Page, Mateus Nicolau, Werner Jandaroba, Manel Cape, Steve Ersig, Marcin Tabura, and Nasuddin Imavov. I know Suave James is going to be happy about that one. June is going to consist of Roman Delizzi, Anthony Hernandez, aka Fluffy, and BSD. And UFC 303 is going to have Kayla Harrison, Jonathan Martinez, Michelle Pereira, Lupi Gadinas, Kyle Burajo, Norma Dumont, Tager, Ulan Bekov, I believe, Alexander Romanov, Mario Batista. Gianzad, Piani, I can't, I can't pronounce it, uh, Piani, Gianzad, Joaquin Buckley, Randy Brown, and Chris Curtis, right, um, I know a lot of y'all gonna probably ask, hey, Kayla Harrison's fighting soon, why is she in the UFC 300, well, she hasn't fought yet, she hasn't weighed in yet, and the way with how it works with a lot of the roster updates, they want to get the fighters when they're at their most fit, they can't, they don't want to grab the fighter when they're off the couch and they're not training in fact a lot of the fighters like they refuse to get scanned unless they're in their best shape possible so the best time to kind of capture a fighter's likeness is when they're about to fight so that's like that's not including alter egos right so they have the whole list here i'll let the list is right there that's the exact timing of fighter editions is subject to change but you know i i, <laughs> I mean like this is pretty much clear this is the beginning of april then it's gonna be late april i don't know about june i don't know about it should be early june or late june i think that's how it's probably gonna work so they have like the whole patch notes and now for the gameplay updates they tune stamina recovery between rounds which i was able to kind of test with uh Zyaf, martial mind kinetic energy lots of other guys adjusted evasion properties ducking and rebounds to speed and power for various strike types i will say this with the stamina recovery we were able to play a build that got tuned even more with regards to uh grappling stuff and stamina but i don't think that's going to be this build so whatever they got cooking for y'all it's still going to be a very good build but i would even tell you that it's going to get even much better but for this patch drops at 10 a.m pt tomorrow launch downtime none <laughs> they got all the graphics out for whatever they do best all the new fighters alter egos Whoo, you guys are gonna love the alter egos i ain't gonna tell you i ain't gonna tell you but you guys will see them and you guys are gonna be very happy so striking they reduce the stamina recovery between rounds uh oh reduce the stamina recovery between rounds by 20 percent after the previous increases of stamina cost for block missed and evaded strikes we saw the stamina seem to be in a good place at the end of the first round but fighters could recover too much going into round two so they reduced this even further so especially round three four and five based on what we test and what you guys are definitely going to see in my uh what fucking showcase was it who's on boy all right muhammad makayev showcase that you get you guys are gonna see you guys are gonna see right this also applies to round recovery as a whole not just from striking so grappling also applies here they uh improve their evasive properties of the stationary duck by by one frame I know one frame doesn't seem like much, but being there in person and seeing how they work it, it's huge. Like, this one frame was 
pretty, pretty, pretty good and it helps the shorter fighters especially because pulling is more of a taller guy. Still helps the short guys too, but the punches should no longer go down to the chin instead of hit the top of the head, keeping a plausible arc, deal a lot less damage and won't cause a hit stun. So this mitigation mechanic isn't new but wasn't coming into play much given the previous tuning of the evasion frames themselves and improve the evasive properties of the advancing and retreating ducks slow down the haymaker execution so that shit was fast as hell <laughs> you guys see what max Holland, that shit was fast as hell so they slowed that down uh for the rear overhand i think some people felt that it was kind of telegraphed too easy and a lot of fighters do tend to use the overhand as a good counter against the jab so this is going to help open up the rear overhand as a good over the top counter against the jab <laughs> increase the slap damage okay <laughs> okay should hit more than twice as hard and significantly faster increase this one's huge increases the stopping power of all leg kicks so how early in the opponent strike execution where you need to hit them to interrupt them so when you're if i'm using jose aldo especially in previous patches it was pretty hard to go against somebody who's boxing heavy because you, you could try to interrupt them with a kick but you really weren't able to like they could still kind of wade through it this in itself is going to be huge and open up a lot of things for leg kickers for leg kickers on the flip side of that they nerf the cartwheel <laughs> kick and rolling thunder much easier uh to counter after blocking them so now like after you block them you have a good amount of time to be able to strike right after and they're not gonna be able to block so freely they did increase the damage as a trade-off for it so that's good the rear hook kick got a buff in damage the bleed through for the jumping switch kicks got a nice uh, buff in damage same thing for the tornado kick so overall this is with regards to block damage as well as bleed through damage so these are going to be good setup strikes to get um finishes when your opponent's health is low so keep that in mind o'malley's uh 720 kick got an increase in damage okay that that one i didn't uh, notice when i was up there this one was nice to sped up the lead front kicks execution they reduced the rear front kicks base damage and slowed down its advancing execution a lot of people kind of just throwing this super fast front kick from all the way out in range and it wasn't really something that you see a lot of fighters do usually tend to use the jumping animation so this is going to coincide with that these side kicks base damage and sped up its execution rear side kicks base damage too and let's see we fix our issues with some bug fixing tune visual damage to match doctor check results more authentically and intuitively cuts will not only reach maximum bleeding when the cut damage is maxed out visual swelling will be more limited until swelling damage is maxed out this should create a clearer distinction between when the eyes are almost swollen and versus when they are remove the reduction of visual swelling after fighters are treated by cut men such as going into new round or decision i should remain swollen so i'm going to okay that's cool so i'm gonna say this because i know y'all gonna be asking me there was a couple things that get abused with regards to the bleed through for this patch specifically obviously wasn't necessary on time but we were able to show them with certain things that were exploitable with uh doctor stoppages and whatnot how much they're able to get bleed through so they can uh, cause like the doctor to come in they're aware of that they have footage of me making it happen they have all everything that they need so while that's not on this patch the likelihood is going to be it should be in a future patch so they are aware of all those fixes and those type of exploits with regards to like cut damage and doctor stoppages so keep that in mind now for the grappling they slightly increase significantly excuse me increase the range of the speed of double legs and single legs myself as a grappler you can tell how pissed i get when i see pathetic <laughs> single legs and double legs they had dead frames at the beginning which they were able to shave up to make it more smoother i will say um I personally still felt they need a little bit more of an adjustment, but it's much better than before. This was kind of back in UFC 3 where they allows the single leg to morph into the low single leg when your opponent walks out of range. This was in UFC 3, you were able to like, somebody was backing up, it would just automatically switch to the low single leg. So now you can punish your opponents. If they're throwing like a three, four, five piece combination, and now they're backing up out of range, you initiate the low single, you have a better chance of taking them down. And this one, all right. Increase the short term stamina cost. Of muscle my five trains. We wanted 25%. We wanted 25%, not 50. So we'll see how it plays out. If it becomes useless, they'll probably bring it down to 25% or even less. And now here, allowed single under escapes to interrupt the dominant fighter's elbows. This is one of the fixes to one of the exploits. It was possible to throw elbows continuously and guarantee that one will land for free when the opponent escaped, regardless of how they time the escape. Told you we'll be up there doing shit. Made the AI's grind. This AI stuff. So you guys can take a look at that. I'll zoom in a little bit. 
more unpredictable for the AI's ground and pound and lower the chances of AI posture of full guard and half guard, okay? Oh! 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 <laughs> I didn't know this! They got Aldermaine Sterling and Featherweight! That's dope! Career mode, longevity. Alright, cool, cool, cool. So, that's pretty much it for like the patch update. You guys are gonna have fun with this patch. You guys are really gonna have fun with this patch. And for future, future things too. So, I'm pretty happy with uh, how this patch turned out, especially being able to play test it ahead of time. A lot of you guys say EA should be having their game changers, etc., etc., going out there and testing. Well, that's exactly what they did. So, when this patch drops tomorrow, let me know how you guys like it. I'm gonna be uploading footage of what I got over when I was over at EA Sports, as well as uh, training stuff, motion capture, etc., etc. So, hopefully, you guys appreciate all the incoming content. Remember, 17, I appreciate y'all. Much love. Take care and have a wonderful day.